Welcome to Real Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about the postulates of kinetic molecular theory. Does that sound like a scary title or what? Postulates are just a set of assumptions that we're going to start with to establish the foundation of kinetic molecular theory. Kinetic molecular theory is all about how gases behave and it helps us establish all of our different gas laws that you use in chemistry. And so kinetic molecular theory is like that starting point. And we can do math from these different starting points to get out those cool equations. So what is it that we're assume, assuming about the behavior of gases in the kinetic molecular theory? Well, let's go through those five postulates. Okay, the first postulate says, gas molecules are constantly moving and only change directions after a collision. So I got a sweet little cylinder over here showing these gas molecules bouncing around and they just continue in the direction they're traveling until they run into something. That's basically what this postulate says. They're moving around all the time. In fact, at room temperature, the molecules, like sitting around your face right now, are moving at around 700 miles per hour. That's really fast. And they just move until they run into something. So a gas molecule is gonna move around until it runs into your screen, and then it's gonna bounce off of it. It's gonna move around until it runs into your wall, and then it's gonna bounce off of it. And it won't change direction unless that happens. Okay, the second postulate tells us that the gas molecules are spread out, that they're dilute. That just means that there's a large distance between each gas molecule. In a liquid, molecules are very close together. In a gas, they're so far spread out that we uh, can basically consider them to not interact at all. And so that's a very helpful postulate. Now, one way to see how spread out they are is if we think about how much space a mole takes up. If we have a liquid, for a liquid, one mole takes up about 18 milliliters. So take water, for example. And 18 milliliters of water, which is, you know, not much water at all. It's less than an ounce of water. So your Coke can, for example, would have over 12 times this amount, over 12 moles. There's one mole in 18 milliliters. For a gas, under typical circumstances, 22 liters is equal to one mole. So that's way, way, way bigger, about a thousand times bigger. So that's how spread out our molecules are. There's not very many of them. And that's why this is actually kind of a good representation because it shows just a few molecules in that space. And the molecules are so spread out that actually if those molecules were drawn to scale, these are too close together. So the molecules are really spread out, really dilute. The third postulate tells us that pressure comes from collisions. So in this room that you're sitting in right now, the pressure is about one atmosphere or 14 pounds per square inch. 14 pounds per square inch. That's ridiculous, okay? Imagine going to the gym, getting 14 pounds out off of the, off of the uh, you know, weight set thing. That's a pretty formal name, huh? And setting it all on your thumbnail. That's about 14 pounds per square inch, okay? So that's a huge amount of pressure, and that pressure is across your whole body right now from collisions. The gas molecules are hitting you. Just like if someone threw a baseball at your head, it would exert a force. These gas molecules are doing that all the time. And the pressure is equal to force divided by area. So each collision has a certain force associated with it when it bounces off a surface. And we divide that by the area over which all those collisions are happening and we get the pressure. So pressure is equal to force divided by area and in kinetic molecular theory, the pressure comes from these collisions. Okay, two more postulates, then we're done. Fourth, gas molecules are not attracted to each other. Sad times, they're also not repelled by each other. They don't know the other one exists, okay? And what that's saying is there's no intermolecular forces. Now, it may, may be your first time hearing the phrase intermolecular forces, but molecules generally wanna be close to each other. So in water, hydrogen bonds hold the adjacent molecules together. So in water, liquid water, I should be clear, we have two water molecules and they'll be quite close together. And actually there's a force linking that oxygen and hydrogen called a hydrogen bond. But in gas, they're so far apart that here's one water, if we had a gaseous water vapor, and there's the other water molecule, they're so far apart, there's no attraction. So they don't feel any attraction to each other. This is kind of cool because it means that we can treat all different types of gas molecules basically the same. Because we don't have to worry about the different types of attractive forces they might have, we just ignore all of that. And that turns out to be pretty close to true.
Now, if you get to really, really, really concentrated gases, then this might not be true anymore. And so this is an important point to remember that these postulates are assumptions we're making, which are generally true, but not guaranteed to be true in every case. Okay, postulate five, the energy of a gas, the kinetic energy of its gas determines its temperature. So the, uh, the kinetic energy that our molecules have is what tells us what temperature it is. So you can see here in our two cylinders, we have one that's been heated up and these longer tails are indicating that they're moving faster. So something that's warmer is just simply moving faster, has higher kinetic energy. Okay, so that is the fifth postulate, which just tells us that temperature of a gas is determined by its kinetic energy. Okay, in another video, which I'm gonna link to below, we'll actually go through and talk about how temperature and kinetic energy relate in a little more detail. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry.